Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today we'll be unboxing the models I got from Christmas 2023. This unboxing will spark not only a new value in my collection, but also an upcoming airport update series to be added to my channel. I'll reveal more on that at the end of the video. Anyways, let's get into it. We'll start off the unboxing with the smallest of them all, this Herpa 1400 scale hop by Air France Regional Embraer E170. I picked this one up in person at the airplane shop in Miami, which is always fun to visit since not only is it right next to Kilo Mica India Alpha, Miami's main airport, but is neatly packed with models. I kid you not, I'm amazed every time I visit. Hop works as a subsidiary of Air France and has a fleet of 13 E-170 and 19 E-190 aircraft. They're seen at many of the parent carrier's lower demand destinations. Anyways, after unboxing the adorably tiny model, we start off at the very front. We have the cockpit windows, which are just above the micro-printed Embraer logo. We then have the L1 door, followed by the hop by Air France titles. Then there are the wings and the tiny little engines. After that is the aircraft's registration, which is Foxtrot Hotel Bravo X-Ray Echo, followed by the L2 door. And finally on the vertical stabilizer, we have the oversized exclamation mark that makes me question if they allow indoor voices on board. Since Air France is starting to take full control over its regional subsidiary, they're working to paint all hop aircraft into the current Air France livery, featuring but a small recognition symbol for the once semi-independent airline. This model is my first of any Herpa model, and although it doesn't have drastic amounts of detail, I appreciate the simplicity of the livery and the perfect structure of the mold. Following that is this Panda Models Qatar A320-200 in the FIFA World Cup 2022 livery. This is actually my first model from this brand, and I was curious to see how it differs from the larger brands such as Gemini and NG. The box holding the model isn't the average, as you can see it shows a city skyline on the front instead of a cutout of the aircraft the model replicates. Instead, you can find the aircraft, its name, type, and all the details on the sides of the box, along with the Qatar Airlines logo. Inside the packaging of the box, there are these small white balls that are supposed to protect the wingtips from any damage, which I guess is a benefit, but seems useless since unless you have loose items in the package, nothing should bother the model. Before we review the model, I'd like to point out this one rolls very smoothly, even better than some NG models. I also already see immense detail on the model. So far, I'm liking this new brand. Starting off with the snoot of the aircraft, we have the cockpit, then the L1 door. After which, we have the Qatar titles, followed by an unknown sentence in Arabic, which is just over the emergency exit. The wing is a blend of both light and dark grey. The engines mirror the grey and feature the Qatar logo on the side. Following that, we have the FIFA World Cup, Qatar 2022 title, the Qatar flag, and the registration, Alpha 7 Alpha Hotel Echo. Lastly, the vertical stabilizer, which has the partial airline logo. On the white belly of the model, we can see the Qatar Airlines mark in the middle of the underside, and even a small hole for any stand you might have. Next up is this Croatia Airlines Airbus A319 in a new livery by JC Wings, a model which I've been eyeballing for some time now. Not only is this model extremely rare, but I actually flew on this aircraft back when I was too young to know what routes were, so I can't really tell you where we were going. This is also the first model I've purchased from this brand, and must I say, I am not disappointed. As you can see on the front side of the box, it shows three aircraft, and no, not all of them are in the box. Back when this model was first released, JC Wings released two other Croatia A319 models. And in the end, we got one old livery, one plain new livery, and one special new livery. However, if you know Croatia Airlines, you'll remember that they have a special title and symbol on each of their aircraft, even to this day. Similar to how Lufthansa names their planes after German cities, just better. This specific model's symbol represents Zagreb, the capital of Croatia, and is named 25 Godina, which is Croatian for 25 years. The point is basically celebrating the nation's flag carrier's 25th anniversary. The two other models shown on the box are giving the symbols Zadar and Pula after other larger cities within Croatia. Alright, I think I've ran my mouth enough, let's unbox it. Starting off with the nose, we can see the model's title, which as I said earlier, reads 25 Godina, representing the airline's 25th anniversary. Following that is the Star Alliance logo, then the L1 door, which is alongside the Airbus A319 logo. Continuing down the fuselage, there is the airline title, which is just above the aircraft symbol, which is a picture of a castle on a hill during night and day, which I believe is the coast of arms symbol for the city. Moving on toward the wings, we have the grey engines, and then the emergency exit and its pathway. Onto the rear of the model, we have the website address for the airline, which is just above the registration, 9 Alpha Charlie Tango Hotel. Following that are the Croatian and European Union flags. And just after the L2 door, not counting the emergency exit, we have the empanage and vertical stabilizer, which are both coated with squares in the classic red and blue colors of Croatia Airlines. All of which is above the blue underbelly of the aircraft, which on the bottom features a hole for a stand. And similar to other brands, this JC Wings model features three antennas on the top, which pairs with some printed Wi-Fi and communications domes. And now for the final aircraft of this unboxing, and probably the most personal, we have a model that I've been waiting to get ever since I started collecting, and also a plane I flew on for the first time this summer, and then once more on the way back from vacation. This model is, as the box 100% easily suggests, the Lufthansa Boeing 7478i in the old livery by Phoenix Models. This model, like I said, is a personal purchase since I only just flew on it in the real world and for the first time. After that, almost two months later, I flew it again, both times in business class. 
Both experiences were very memorable and fulfilling, and definitely crossed off an item on the bucket list. So far, I've released a full trip report that provides an in-depth review of the first flight, which went from Washington to Frankfurt, on my channel. Really quickly, I'd like to thank you guys for all the love that video has received since it was my very first trip report. If you'd like to check it out and get a laugh along the way, I'll be linking it in the description of this video. Back to the unboxing, the box shows a very picturesque view of the famous Victory Column in Berlin, which has a viewing platform near the top where you can see the entire city. In addition, this recognizable landmark measures 67 meters tall, which is almost an astonishing 220 feet. On the side of the box, you can see the Boeing 747 titles and many scattered cranes, meaning the bird, which is the logo of Lufthansa Airlines. As we unbox the model, we can just take in the sheer size of it compared to other aircraft models. Starting off with the nose, which houses the majority of the first class passengers and is actually in front of the cockpit. We also have the Lufthansa logo along with the Starlines logo. Lufthansa takes great pride in being part of Starlines since they participated in its creation and have had or still have at least two of every plane type in their fleet painted in the Starlines livery. After the L1 door, we have the Lufthansa titles which are in between the upper and lower stories. Following that is the L3 or L2 door, depending on if you count the one on the upper deck, and then the white wings of the aircraft and the four grey engines attached to them. After the emergency exit slash bottom L3 door, we have yet another door, followed by the Lufthansa.com website address. And then the registration for the aircraft, which is Delta Alpha Bravo Yankee Alpha, alongside the German flag. After that is the vertical stabilizer, which displays the older Lufthansa logo and the last two characters of the registration, Yankee Alpha. Both times that I've been on this plane during last summer, I was actually seated on the right side of the fuselage. For the first flight, I was seated at 88 kilo, which is at the back of the upper deck, right here. For the second flight, I was seated at 9 kilo, which is at the rear of the forward business class cabin on the lower deck. Both seats provided excellent views of the wing and its two engines. On the gray underside of the model, there's a small hole if you want to display this model on a stand. Finally, on the top of the model, we have the nav lights, then two antennas, one up front, and one more to the back. Anyways, that's going to be it for my Christmas unboxing for 2023. I've picked up some rare and exciting models, of which I've been trying to find forever. Before I end the video though, I'd like to keep my word on what I said earlier regarding that upcoming airport series. This upcoming airport update series will be none other than Zagreb's Franjo Tujman Airport. Don't judge me if I pronounced that incorrectly. I tried my best. I've been to this airport many times before, since me and my family always travel to Europe during the summer. Only last summer were we able to travel again after a long pause of not traveling because of COVID. Last summer I flew from Zagreb to Frankfurt to catch my return flight to the States after an exciting vacation. Both Zagreb and Split airports mean a lot to me since I fly in or out of both of them every year. As of right now, I'm not sure how exactly I'll start my new airport update series, but I'll probably use the Gemini Jets terminal and mat for a start, until I save up some money to buy an accurate one of both. As always, if you enjoy content like this and some smooth education along the way, consider subscribing to my channel, which is on the road to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, and have a happy new year.